we're looking at drawing deformed shapes of frames with a moment diagram available, and this video serves as an introduction, detailing of the procedure, and an example to illustrate the procedure. We'll start by observing the differences between deflections in beams and deflections in frames. It's assumed that you already know how to do deflections in beams. If you're not strong with that, go back and watch that video. The main difference is that beams are one-dimensional, they're a line, typically horizontal, and frames are two-dimensional. What are the implications of this? We'll start with the boundary conditions. Now you need to consider both horizontal and vertical directions. The pins restrain the frame in both directions. The rollers restrain it only in one. We need to generalize the concept of continuity of slope. What it means in frames is that at a joint, you must maintain the relative angle between members when the joint rotates. Looking at the diagram here, if I have the joint on the left-hand side that's originally at a right angle, and then the structure moves, and that movement causes a rotation of the joint, those members still need to frame into that joint at a right angle. That angle can be rotated, but it still needs to be the same angle as before the frame was deformed. The last difference between beams and frames is that now we need to make sure that we draw the deformed shape with the member lengths unchanged. The reason for this is that the flexural deformations in a frame are much, much larger than the axial deformations. So for purposes of a hand sketch, the axial deformations are pretty much zero. When I say unchanged, I mean this in a small angle sense. Let's see what it means to be unchanged in a small angle sense. Here, we're showing a member that was originally vertical. It had a length L0. The bottom end moved perpendicular to the original orientation. It now has a length L and is inclined at an angle theta. For the member to truly be the same length, it would have to move along the dashed arc shown here. However, if the angle theta is really small, as we have in real structures, the deformations in real structures are very small, the length L and the length L naught can be shown to be practically the same. So when we draw deformed shapes, we move the ends of the member perpendicular to the original orientation. Let's look at the previous procedure that we had for beams and adapt it to frames. The procedure is still a trial and error process. In fact, it's even more so because frames are more complicated. You'll make more mistakes. We start out, we draw points and slopes corresponding to the boundary conditions, and we pay special attention to rollers. For the rollers, we draw a line along the direction that the roller moves. We identify the curvature of all the segments according to the moment diagram. We sketch a trial shape that connects the points and slopes from step one with the curvature from step two. And then we check that the curve respects boundary conditions, the curvature implied by the moment diagram, the continuity of deflection and angle. We keep in mind that this means that we maintain the relative angle between members that frame and add a joint and we also keep the member lengths unchanged. Lastly, if any of these conditions are not met, we refine the curve and we check again. As with beams, this process is qualitative. There's no numerical answer. It's difficult to know if you have the correct answer. However, if your answer satisfies all the conditions in step four, you know that your answer is correct. Now let's look at an example to illustrate the process. We're showing a frame. It's a portal frame with the hinge at the top of one of the columns. There's a point load in the middle of the beam. The moment diagram that results is shown to the right. We start by sketching the undeformed shape in dashed lines, and that's a reference for what we're gonna draw next. Here, the boundary conditions are both pins, and so we can draw points at each pin. Those points cannot move. Step two. Identify the curvature of all the segments according to the moment diagram. The beam is concave up. There's no moment in either of the other two members. Those members are therefore straight. Step three, let's sketch 
a trial shape. Typically, when people are learning, they'll draw a concave up beam there and straight members there. It seems obvious to me, right? Well, let's check. Before I run through the check, pause the video for a moment. Run through the checks yourself and see if you can identify what is wrong with this shape. Let's run through the checks together. Boundary conditions, the deformed shape goes through the dots that we drew earlier. That's correct. The curvature, the beam is concave up, the other two members are straight. That's correct. Continuity of deflection and angle. If we look at the joint on the upper left hand side, that was originally at 90 degrees. I'm drawing in a superimposed 90 degree angle. And we can see right there that that angle is no longer at 90 degrees. That angle has closed up. So we fail continuity of angle. The other angle is okay. It's a hinge. We can have an angle change at a hinge. But the bottom line is that we have not satisfied this check. Lastly, the member lengths are indeed unchanged, so we're okay there. So we haven't met all the conditions. We need to refine our curve, so we'll erase what we had there and try again. Ah, well now I'm thinking. I need to fix that angle at the top. So I'm going to change the column so that it comes in at a nice little angle there. That looks pretty good. Now that's a 90 degree angle. It's rotated, but I know it can rotate, so I'm happy with it. Let's run through the checks again. Boundary conditions, still respected. Curvatures, oh man! That column's supposed to be straight, and now I'm drawing it curved. I messed that up. Sure, I fixed the relative angle. That's all fine, and the member links are unchanged, but I fixed one thing and I messed another thing up. Oh, this is frustrating. Let's try one last time. Pause the video. Give it a shot. Try to draw the correct deformed shape yourself. This is pretty difficult, so I don't know if you got it or if you didn't. What we eventually arrive at is that we need to move the entire structure to the right. And that allows that left-hand member to frame in at the same angle, but be straight at the same time. And the right-hand member just follows along. Once again, the angle on the right-hand side can change because there's a hinge. We've enforced the 90-degree angle at the left-hand side. Now I'm feeling better. Let's run through the checklist one last time. Boundary conditions are fine. The deformed shape still goes through the pin. Curvature. The columns are straight. The beam is concave up. Yep. Continuity of deflection and angle. We just discussed it. The angle is still 90 degrees on the left-hand side. It's allowed to change on the right-hand side, so there's no problem there. The member lengths are indeed unchanged in a small angle sense. I've moved them horizontally from the original orientation. So that's satisfied as well. We've gone through several iterations. It might have been frustrating, but at the end of the process, we run through our checks one last time. Those are all satisfied, and we're now comfortable that we have the correct deformed shape of the frame.